Hey there everybody and welcome to G-Tech. Today I'm continuing my little mini series that I like to call Talking Tech with Tubers. And if you remember last episode, I actually talked to Zach from Zach's Tech Turf, kind of about how he runs his channel, his behind the scenes, all that sort of, you know, interview stuff. And in the past, I've actually talked to Zach from Jerry Rig Everything and Michael Fisher from Mr. Mobile, both awesome tech channels that I highly recommend you check out. But today I'm not just interviewing one person, I'm actually interviewing two. These two guys work as a duo on a a little channel called the Toasty Bros. You may or may not have heard of them. They're one of the bigger and more well-known tech channels out there, so I'm actually super excited to get to talk to these guys. But I'm gonna stop my rambling and we're just gonna get right into it. So without further ado, here's Jack and Matt from the Toasty Bros. Take it away, guys. Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And that sounds a lot like one of our intros because we are YouTubers who mostly revolve around tech such as building PCs, reviewing PCs, reviewing PC hardware, and we even have our own separate business called PCBros.tech where we actually sell PCs. So we've been running this YouTube channel since September 2014, but Jax and I have been making YouTube videos even long before that. We had so many channels that we started, failed, but this one actually stuck because, well, computers. And speaking of other channels, you know, kind of how we started was just doing random videos. Like that's the reason why we called it Toasty Bros. We didn't want it to have any specific meaning. So now we have two other channels called Toasty DIY, which is literally full of car stuff, technology stuff, vlog stuff, you name it. And then we have Toasty Clips, which is a basically a compilation of our stream videos. Before YouTube, well, I was young. I, we started this channel in high school, so I was just in school, just doing school stuff, being a gamer. But uh, throughout the uh, progression of this channel, I went to college for uh, business management. Well, I started in web design, then moved to business management, and then Jackson over here went for computer engineering. So we're educated YouTubers. We actually both had normal jobs up until last year. Funny enough, we actually worked at the same pizza place for about five or six years. I also I also was a mechanic part-time and then full-time for a couple of summers until I realized, hey, college is the move. And I recently just stopped working for a YouTube MCN, just doing a lot of connecting with YouTubers, helping them grow their channels. And I decided, you know what? I should probably put all my energy in focusing to grow my own. So yeah, here I am. So really what got me into tech was honestly gaming probably started it because I feel like I remember gaming when I was like four or five years old in like a Sega Genesis and then I just kind of went up from there and eventually PC kind of was the move. Matt had a computer before me and you know I needed to get on the computer grind because he was over here making Gary's mod videos so I needed to uh, get Minecraft going. RIP Pika Boy 103. But yeah no I probably got into tech just from tinkering with like computer hardware to make games run better. Like if we're talking PC tech that's the main reason I got into it but I would say in general I just grew up around playing games. Games were the main thing that got me into technology um, and then progressively just went into like smartphones and things like that. So uh, yeah, tech was basically my upbringing, just playing with computer parts and stuff. So this question probably would have been a better question like months and months ago, but really now what gets me most excited, I feel like Matt's on a similar boat, is when I know stuff's going to be in stock. It's really nice hearing companies say, hey, we're coming out with this new piece of hardware. Here's how we're going to keep good stock of it. Here's how we're going to keep people from buying it for crypto mining. Um, so I like seeing stuff like that. Yeah, the advancement in technology, I mean, it's cool to see how much of an increase there was over like 2000 series in video to like 3000 series. Like, I think we had a really big jump in GP performance, but we weren't able to actually enjoy that with everything in stock and be able to have it in everyone's gaming rig and make a lot of videos that you all could build. So really, if everything was in stock, I'd be very excited where we are in the uh, space where VR is super accessible. All the different things you can do in tech is very much accessible and affordable. So yeah. Uh, just get better stock. Yeah, please. So that's a great question. I kind of somewhat answered this at the beginning of the video, but we have a separate company called PCBros.tech, which actually shares the warehouse of this building. But basically it's a business where we do custom gaming PCs for people who specifically want them. We also just have PCs generally for sale on the website, PCBros.tech. And that includes our custom builds we do here on the channel. And we have our own PCs that we build for PCBros.tech. So there's like a APU systems and things like that we sell over there. But mainly when we build a custom rig or we get a laptop or a desktop that we go out and get. We normally sell it online at a pretty decent rate so you can pick it up, especially if it includes a new GPU because you guys can get a really good deal on stuff that you, well, normally can't find. So realistically, I kind of like everything. I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there who really like specific brands. Like for example, Linus for a while was only really messing with like Crucial and Corsair. We've always been extremely open. That's kind of what we go for is we're the budget bros. Like we go after anything that's cheap yet good quality. So we kind of test everything just to see if that price versus performance is really there. But is it group regulated though? <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, this is a pretty tough question because I think on Toasty Brush channel alone, we have over 600 videos 
is not to mention the other channels, but I actually really enjoyed the mineral PCs back in the day. Like our first, you know, viral video, for example, I really enjoyed that. Other than that, I really feel like a lot of the videos kind of turn to chores at times, especially when um, things go wrong and then you're having to like go back and troubleshoot. But until then, they're really fun. And also I like when sometimes we step away and just kind of forget about the fact, you know what, this video might not do great, but we're gonna do it anyways for the fun of it. Like the uh, building a PC and mineral oil video where we actually had high hopes for that one. And just believe it or not, we had high hopes for that one uh, where we're just getting like soaked with mineral oil while we're trying to build a PC. That was just fun, kind of stupid, good way to get out of the office and try something different. But uh, yeah, like doing some of those where we step away from the traditional PC build and just kind of experiment a little bit. And I like that we're at the place in the channel now where it won't totally kill our channel if we do something Something totally out there um, and just try to do something new. So honestly, we really don't do a ton of deal hunting. There's a lot of YouTubers who are very proactive about finding the best of deals. Um, our photo editor actually looks for specific deals like on Reddit and stuff like that to repost them to our uh, Toasty Deal page on Twitter. But realistically, the deals kind of just come to us a lot of the times. Like we'll have an employee tell us, hey, there's a good deal on this. Do you want to buy it? But other than that, we don't really hunt very hard. Considering we run two businesses, we have a lot of stuff we're dealing with day to day. And most of the time when I'm doing research for a specific video, it's either a brand approached me with a good deal and I want to take that deal and showcase it on the channel. Uh, like we've been working a lot with HP and they've been a really good go-to option with the market being the way that it is. I know that's mainly why I asked this question because the market's ridiculous right now. Uh, but trying to find just little in and out hidden gems by just looking on social media and stuff is probably the best way we do that. So believe it or not, our PCs at the office and our PCs at home are honestly pretty low end considering we do this for a living. None of us have new RTX cards. We just have 20 series. Um, and I think some of us might even have like 16 series. So we really don't go all out with like new RTX stuff, which we try to preach that to customers and people on YouTube videos too. We're like, oh, I need a new 3090 to play Roblox when really you don't. I mean, we make a living doing this and there's a lot of people who, you know, just want a 3090 for hobby purposes, which if you have the money, it's fine. Um, but yeah, we're all just running Ryzen, Intel, Real basic stuff. Real basic stuff. Yeah, 28 Super at home with a 3700X. He's the exact same thing at home. Uh, office PCs vary from like mine, which has like a 10900K, so that's like probably the highest in CPU we have in there right now. And we just did that because it was sent to us. Like yeah. we would have never bought that stuff. So yeah, it works for our use case. And uh, yeah, again, budget bros. We try to preach value for money. And when you're at that high end, you really don't need much more than that. You don't need to go the extra step to the latest and greatest all the time. And actually our main editor's PC, the one who literally edits all of our videos. Um, he's using a Ryzen 3700X with a 2080 Super and that just goes to show you do not need a you know brand new 5950X with a 3090 to edit YouTube videos. Now to film our videos, we're actually using the main camera we use right now. That is the Lumix GH5 from Panasonic. Absolutely love this camera. We did drop like two grand, two or three grand on Nice lens Yeah, too. nice lens, nice lens. So two or three grand, but honestly it was well worth it. The, the lens we have is very versatile. Like I know a lot of YouTubers spend a ton of money on lenses for different use cases, but this one works great in pretty much any situation. So we absolutely love it. I really don't even know what it is. I think it's an 18 to 60 mil. So something like that, we'll try to, well, this is your video, you do whatever you want with it, but uh, love that camera. And also for audio, we use these uh, Deity uh, wireless mics. That I saw, is there a question here where you said, what is one thing you couldn't live without? These are absolutely essential for our videos because <laughs> unless we want to have a shotgun mic that someone has to carry around all the time, the fact that we can just, you know, walk all over the place and you can still hear us. And there's no like distance difference. You still have right and left channel perfectly cut. So it makes it absolutely awesome for, uh, well, the audio. We don't have to worry too much about it. So for lighting, we just have really basic soft boxes. I mean, these are the ones you can buy off Amazon for 20 to 30 bucks. We basically took them off the stands, hung them from our drop ceiling, and then ran the cords to the ceiling and everything. And we have it hooked up to these LED panels above us, which really we were just using normal fluorescent lights before that. They just had a really bad flicker, and I was tired of the bulbs going out randomly, so I just went over and replaced them with LED lights, and then we put these I don't even know what those are called, like I, light, like light covers, blockers. Something like yeah, that. They, they basically look like tissue paper covering the light to kind of diffuse it. Um, and then we have some nice RGB lights, also Amazon special for 30 to 40 bucks. Our brand new set, if you guys really are curious about this set, there's a Toasty DIY video about that. I'm just gonna plug so many things in this video, just enjoy it. We'll also have a Toasty Bros uh, setup tour coming soon where we show yeah. the whole entire place. Yeah, more details there. 
So our video making routine is pretty straightforward. Normally it just starts with an idea, whether Jackson and I uh, come up with an idea, whether we have a PC bill we need to do for a client or we have something coming in from a company. Start with that, we plan it out, we get all the affiliate links and everything sorted out, and then we decide where on the calendar it's gonna be shot and filmed. Uh, so for example, I have a little calendar over there that uh, we update from our Trello page, which if you guys don't know what Trello is, it's like an organization thing. There's a lot of videos on DIY about it. I've talked about Trello before, but it's a very complicated, for those at home who really don't make YouTube videos or run a business, it's probably pretty boring, but we can list out all our different, well, projects that we're working on with links and everything and have everyone coordinate together on making the, well, thumbnail, like Zach will work on the thumbnail, and then when it's ready to be edited, McAllister will edit the video. But yeah, we come in, shoot the video, give it to McAllister to edit, I review the video, we uh, schedule upload it, and boom, that's pretty much how the Toast Bros process works in a nutshell. So we've been asked this question quite a bit, from when we had 100 subscribers to when we have over 300,000 subscribers, and the advice really has not changed. One of the main, main rules to go by is stay consistent. You're not gonna get in the YouTube algorithm ever, or you're gonna get kicked out of it if you don't upload consistently. So whether it's once a month, once every two weeks, twice a week, three times a week, or even every day, you just wanna make sure you don't stray away from that because we've noticed when we compare ourselves to other small YouTubers, or even ones that are three times the size of us, will often have more views consistently than because you know they don't have a consistent schedule. They'll stop for a week, and they'll have one week where they upload 20 videos. So a lot of times YouTube kind of kicks you out of the algorithm if you're not careful. And another thing that's very vague, I'll be totally honest with you, is you just gotta find something to make yourself stand out. I mean, it's, it's really hard just to jump in and just say, hey, look at this computer, especially nowadays. There's a lot of tech channels. When we first started out, there were the big name tech channels, but there weren't a ton of the budget ones that are out there right now. Now there's a ton of budget ones and a lot of people want to get in on the budget PC hardware side of things, but we were able to sneak in with the Monroe PC and continue with really cheap computers because it wasn't well known that you could build a computer for under $1,000. Everyone thought it was incredibly expensive to get into PC gaming, and we kind of helped, well, dispel that myth. So just find something a little bit unique that you can do, whether you want to specialize in one thing uh, in the PC space, and just run with it. So when we are not running the YouTube channel, I know one thing we both have in common is we're both dog dads. You know, dog we're dads. always playing with our dogs. They're both very young, so it's basically like having a kid to an extent. I really enjoy a lot of hobbies, and I mean a lot of hobbies. I play guitar. I had a gun hobby for a while. I really like cars, and I still am constantly working on cars. I have three at the moment, so that kind of takes up a lot of my time. I would say mainly for me, it's work, and then when I'm at home, I'm just really into sports. I've been, I'm a big college sports fan, basketball, football. Um, I'm trying, especially with COVID, like going away, trying to go to more events, more actual football games, basketball games. During the summer, I just like to be outside doing stuff, like I mentioned, hanging out with my dog and stuff, my <laughs> girlfriend, just running around doing stuff. Uh, but yeah, my this extent of my hobby. Sometimes I'll pick up something very random and get into it for a little bit, and then just kind of throw it to the side. But most of the time, I'm just, I'm really into tech, so like I'm always doing stuff with tech in one way or another. I've always been pretty open on music, honestly. I'd basically say I'd listen to everything besides like bluegrass, country, um, and then pop is definitely a little bit lower, but I do definitely enjoy a lot of pop and rap. Obviously my favorite would have to be like rock and classic rock and metal. I would say for me, I'm a little bit all over the place. I would say if I had to pick a genre, it'd be like alternate rock, that kind of deal. Um, and some of these like alt pop rock bands, like I'm a big fan of like 21 Pilots. I'm a big fan of individual artists like John Bellion, like all of those, I would fall into that category, but I'm pretty open with the kind of music I listen to. Um, but I don't really listen to a ton of music. Um, when I'm around here, I listen to music, but I'm a big person into podcasts. Like I'm really into podcasts. Like I listen to those all the time, mainly sports radio stuff, but um, yeah. That's my thing. I would say right now for favorite shows and movies, my favorite shows, I've been really into The Mandalorian, obviously. In this space, a lot of people are really nerdy over that. So love Star Wars stuff. I would say really into Star Wars movies. I'm not someone who likes to re-watch stuff, but Star Wars movies, I can re-watch and actually enjoy them. I've been going through the series again with my girlfriend because she has not actually watched any of them. So that's been a fun experience. But uh, yeah, Star Wars is probably my number one. But as I mentioned, I don't watch a ton of TV. If I do, I pick up some like series that I'll binge watch on like Hulu or Netflix and then kind of be done with it. But other than that, I'm mainly just watching sports stuff. I'm kind of in the same boat. I actually recently did the exact same thing. My girlfriend had not seen all of Star Wars and we wanted to go see the newest one that was in the theater. So we watched all of them, then went and saw, I think multiple of the ones in theaters. And then we watched The Mandalorian. Um, we also really got into like Avatar and Legend of Korra. Oddly enough, they came on Netflix. So highly recommend them if you haven't seen them. And yeah, other than that, movies haven't really been a big thing because, you know, COVID. I haven't really gotten to go to the movie theaters in over a year now, surprisingly. Miss the movie theater. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of open again, so if you get a chance to go to the movie theater, go. Support movie theaters. You they need, need it. it.
So this is the last good question. The video games that Matt and I enjoy because, well, we kind of said we started all this because of video games. I will go ahead and say Halo is an all-time favorite, whether it's Halo 1, 2, 3. I definitely think I really enjoyed 2, 3, and Reach, and then after that, I'm kind of eh on Halos, but yeah, we had a lot of fun with those. Um, I kind of enjoyed Call of Duty growing up. Uh, my games now, though, I know Zach and I play a lot of Apex Legends, Brawlhalla, uh, we played like Cold War and uh, Black Ops a lot, but other than that, I'm really not like a huge gamer. Like I don't get into single player games really at all anymore. I even buy single player games just for the multiplayer typically. I would say for me, like if you asked me like a couple months ago, I probably wouldn't really be able to answer like my favorite all time game. I really like the Halos and Call of Duties. Like I grew up just playing first person shooters. I mean, they're great. Um, I would say honestly, if I had to pick an all time favorite game, I'm like a big Pokemon nerd now. Like I've been really diving back into old Pokemon games, playing those when I have free time, uh, play the latest one and I enjoy it. I don't know what it is. I've just been really into that series again and I played it a lot when I was younger, so it's kind of a nostalgic thing, but also just fun at the same time. So if I had to pick an all-time favorite series, I would go with that. Can't forget Morrowind and Oblivion and Skyrim. Yeah, Skyrim. I honestly forgot about those. Those are really good ones too. So to wrap this video up, we are the Toasty Bears. We're also Toasty DIY. We're also Toasty Clips. Those are all of our YouTube channels. And then we also have PCBros.tech if you ever want to buy a computer peripherals. And we have an on-site location if you want to come in and meet us and buy stuff. That's, That's what it. a lot of social media is. We have all the social medias. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Uh, do we say Twitch already? Here I said Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. I don't even know. Twitch. Twitch. But we have a lot of things. Check out our channel if you really like what we do. Um, and yeah, thanks to George for uh, reaching out for this interview. Appreciate it. Hopefully it was better than Zach Tech Turfs. <laughs> Zach Tech Turfs. <laughs> Zach's, Zach's Tech Turfs. Zach's. Is, it, is there an S? Zach Tech Turfs. Or is Zach, it Zach's Tech Does Zach's he own it? Turf? Or is it like there's multiple of him? Are there like, multiple Zach's? Is there, is there like five of them? We'll know. leave you guys with that. We thought. like him. We just want to be better than him. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, guys. That was Jack and Matt with the Toasty Bros. Thank you, dude, so much for coming on the show. It was awesome getting to hear the behind the scenes and the history to the Toasty Bros channel. And I absolutely loved hearing about how you guys have worked as a team throughout it all. I've been following the Toasty Bros since they were under 100,000 subscribers. So it's been awesome getting to watch these guys grow over the years and also learn a little bit about the behind the scenes to the Toasty Bros channel. They've come a long way since they first started and I'm really happy to see how far that they've come. If there's any other tech YouTubers that you guys want me to interview, by all means, leave your recommendations in the comments below. I would love to get to talk to more of these guys like Tech Yes City, Aussie Talks Hardware, Bitwit, Paul's Hardware, Gamers Nexus, Jay's Two Cents, Random Frank P, Linus Tech Tips, MKBHD, all these sorts of guys. I would love to talk to all of them, learn about them, learn how they've run their channels, all that good stuff. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a